there's a, tr a treasure of material available that's not being taught in our schools, in our organizations, and clearly not in our families. I'd like to share about 30 years of research with you that I've been going through just to help you sort of connect some dots and to raise the awareness, which is our topic tonight. Do you remember I said if mom and dad don't connect, what happens to the child becomes an attachment disorder? When that child grows up and there's an attachment disorder, the child will become peer-centric <clears throat> instead of parent-centric. That means when they're 12, 13, and 14, they're going to get life's answers with other 12, 13, and 14 year olds who know less than they do. And now we start teaching each other, hey, what did you know about this? I don't know, my parents are dysfunctional, but you don't know what I think? And that's how we start growing up. So we go from one dysfunction to another dysfunction, and then we pass it on generationally, called genetic or epigenetic transfers. So that's why we're doing that. In all fairness, when we medicate or cut, we never get to causation. So when we medicate, we're basically putting a bandaid over a festering wound that will continue to fester. And when we cut, we never took out the source, did we? So it will come back. Does that make sense? All right. Any questions on that? All right, we're just getting going. <laughs> so what we're going to cover tonight is the first aspect of five component parts of emotional intelligence. Uh, I'm an emotional intelligence consultant. What that means is my job is to teach people social skills. Social skills that are not on the horizon. They're usually very little things. I call them micro skills. Now, we got a book on that. Um, you just hold that up if you would, Jess. Thank you. It's called Listen and Lead. That whole book is nothing but little micro skills of things that we can do that we did not get taught in school. We didn't get taught in the home. And by the way, they were never on our horizon. The way I even found them was because I did everything I, that book would say not to do. I became an expert at what we call maladaptive behavior. So adaptive means it's working. Maladaptive means like malware. It's not working. So I was an expert at that side for a long time because my family of origin was, I traced it four generations deep in my behavior addictions. And I really didn't want my kids to be the fifth generation. So I did all I could to figure it out. This is my research. This is my awareness drive. Okay, so we're going to talk about social skills, starting with self-awareness. By the way, we have a, a test coming up here in just a second. I just wanted to increase the anxiety level. Did it work? Yes. Sweet, thanks. Okay, your job in self-awareness is to learn the skill of recognizing and understanding your emotions. That's called intrapersonal. Just you framed around my kilt-laden friend, okay? That's it. And if I do, I want to know what causes those feelings. Okay, for example, let's pretend Char is my sister. She has a unique ability to really trigger me. Okay, why? What is my basic malfunction that I constantly write a lease agreement to my sister to rent her my happiness for the next hour when we're together in the same house? So I'll do this for a second. Find somebody in your life, just use your imagination, who has the unique ability to torque you off. It shouldn't be hard. Look at that, quick, boom. We got that person, don't we? Okay, so in your mind's eye now, watch yourself, fill it, Mavar, your lease agreement again? <laughs> Filling out your lease agreement to that person who torques you off and say, by the way, I'm changing it. Now put an X through it in your mind's eye and say, I'm no longer leasing my happiness to you. See yourself doing that now, and then we'll teach you how to do it in just a second. All right. Next, what impact do those emotions have on others? So let's say we're working together in the same organization, we're coworkers. When I come to work and I've had a bad day at home, don't you even for a moment think you're leaving all your problems at home. You don't walk in like you see some people, managers say, Hang your personal life on the coat rack right here and come to work without it. There's nothing feasible about that. You are the same at work that you are at home or you are incongruent and you will manifest that. So the idea is to learn principles that you can do at home and at work and they work together. That's called integrate. 
So if you first focus on self, we call it being self-centered. I'll give you just a quick story. So in the office today, just before I came over here, Gal walks up to me and says, Richard, I don't think I like that self-centered thing. I'm not really comfortable with it. And this is a, a fairly religious person. I said, okay, help me understand why you say that. So she said, that's not what we're taught. We're taught it's, you know, others first, you know, and then maybe, you know, so God, others, and then me. I'm, I'm kind of third in there. Gail Sayers wrote the book, I Am Third, right? And I explained the following. So you understand when I say self-centered, this is what I mean. How can I have a good relationship with, let's just say God's important to me, with my God, if I myself am completely screwed up? How am I going to get there? I'm full of addiction. I'm full of malware. And I'm not going anywhere quick, right? I keep going the wrong way. Pain keeps getting bigger. And every time I see the elephant, I turn around and run. So if you don't get yourself fixed, how can you get closer to the person that you want to? Now, next question is, who's ever flown on an airplane? Okay, got, got all right, great stable datum right there. Now, how many of you have been taught when the oxygen mask drops to put it on your neighbor first, starting in the back row, then working forward, and once you've put it on all 175 passengers, sit down and then put the oxygen mask on? Yet that's what we do when others are first. It's what we do when we try to make sure everyone else is taken care of but ourselves. <clears throat> Fix yourself first with the intent to serve others, and you get the idea of being centered on self. That's why we're going. If you don't know what's happening to yourself, how can you do that? What impact do others' emotions have in return? I want to know why my coworkers trigger me. Or I want to know why I have a stomachache every time I walk around this particular person. That'd be important to know. Why does that little nuance that someone does just irk you? Wouldn't that be cool to be able to figure it out and just no more, I'm not doing that anymore, no more lease agreements? Last thing. What impact on the world? Inner personal. So intra, inter, inner relationships, personal relationships. Your goal is to start at the intro with yourself. Then it's to move to the next person, if that next person is your spouse or your god or whatever. And then your next priority is the group as a whole. 